Well, hello and welcome to another episode of Lifeline for Daily Living. Yes, this is the place where you can find the answers to your mental health, relationship, and family questions. I'm your host, Jim Hewitt. Glad you've tuned in today. I think you're going to find today's topic very interesting, so I hope you'll stay tuned because we'll be right back. All right. Hey, welcome back to another episode of Lifeline for Daily Living. So glad that you've joined me again this week. Um, hey, you know, you know, the holidays are here, right? Um, it's a time for um, Thanksgiving for sure. It's a time for uh, families to get together and friends to get together. Um, but, but for some people, this is not a very, very happy time. Uh, in fact, for some people, they would just rather the holidays um, go away. Um, they would just rather not experience the holidays. Um, they would just rather... Uh, just rather, you know, pull the shades, pull the curtains, and lock the doors and be just simply uh, by themselves. Well, what am I talking about? I'm talking about those of you who've lost loved ones. Uh, maybe it was a husband, maybe it was a wife, a father, a mother, um, a child, a uh, relative of some kind, and this has just been a very, very difficult time for you. Uh, perhaps this is the, the, the first um, holiday season um, without that loved one um, and you all will be gathering together uh, and that loved one won't be there. Um, very, very difficult time. Maybe for you it's been um, the second year or the third year <clears throat> or maybe even the fifth year um, after that loved one has, has passed away and, and you would just rather you just rather the holidays uh, go away and not not celebrate the holidays. Uh, you go into into stores or into malls and the holiday music is playing and everybody's kind of in this festive mood. But for you, the world stopped um, and you would just you don't feel happy. You don't feel joyous. You don't really even feel thankful. Maybe um, maybe you feel a little angry. Um, there's a whole host of emotions that, that you may be uh, feeling. Well, well, grief, grief is hard enough to do. Um, grief is hard enough to experience. Uh, but it's even more compounded uh, during the holidays. Uh, the, the, the normal reactions that we have with loss, uh, you know, being sad and, and wanting to isolate, th those are normal reactions. But, but they're, they're heightened even more um, during the holidays. Uh, while there's no right or wrong way uh, to grieve, um, I think there's healthy ways to cope with loss during and grief during the course um, of the holidays. No, you don't have to pull the shades. No, you don't have to pull the curtains. No, you don't have to turn out the lights. No, you don't have to lock the door and be by yourself. Um, it, it is a necessary part of, a, of, of, the, of the experience of grief to go through those things and even, even during the holidays. So let me say at the outset of, of my, my um, focus today on grieving during the holidays um, that there is no right or wrong way to grieve. Uh, for some people, um, you know, grieving lasts a long time. For others, it's a short time. Um, for some, it's a very traumatic kind of experience. For others, um, it's, it's not so much. That doesn't, it doesn't really mean anything. Um, you know, no two people will grieve the same. And so the way I grieve and the way you grieve is probably going to be different. It, it's similar in, in that what we go through, but it's going to be different. Grief, grief is a natural response to loss. Um, whatever the, the loss is, um, whether it's a, a divorce or um, a relationship breakup, um, maybe a loved one has just been told that they have a serious, perhaps even terminal illness. Um, how about the loss of a friendship? 
Um, there's, there's grieving with that as well. Um, selling your family home. Some of you have had to do that this, this past year. Whether, whether you did so voluntarily or maybe it was repossessed or foreclosed on. Um, maybe it was through a, some kind of a disaster. Um, but you, you lost your home. That's, that's a loss as well. How about losing your job? Some of you, um, and it, all, you know, it tends to always happen around the holidays. Uh, you know, everybody. Some people get get uh, get notification that their job will be uh, terminated um, after or right just prior to the holidays. Um, that's a devastating thing. Or maybe you've gotten terminated um, because you know uh, of of something that happened uh, with between you and your employer. Um, maybe maybe you've had um, a miscarriage um, that. And that's a, man, that's a traumatic kind of thing to experience. And that in itself is a loss. Um, how about retirement? Now, we don't often think of retirement in, in terms of grief and loss, but think about it for a second. Um, you know, you've been working 20, 30 years at this same job in this same career, and then, and then you've reached retirement age. And I know, you know, back in, you know, when you're 20s and in your 30s, you're looking forward to retirement and making all these plans and all these things are gonna happen. And then that retirement day gets here and then you wake up the next morning. Oh my gosh, what am I going to do? Uh, I've done this, you know, I've, I've gotten up and I've punched the clock or I've gone to the office or, I, you know, whatever your career is. And I've done that for, for five days a week for 30 years. And now, now what? So there's a, there's a sense of, of loss and grief uh, there as well. Or how about, how about losing a cherished dream? Um, all of us, all of us have dreams, right? All of us do. And, and perhaps this last year was your year to fulfill that, whatever that dream was. And, and now that dream is gone uh, for whatever reason. That, that, dream is, that dream is gone. And now what do you do? And so when I lose that dream, um, you know, I, I'm kind of left empty and, and kind of floundering around trying to figure out what I'm going to do next. Well, all of those things have to do with loss and grief. And those things that I just mentioned are heightened even more during the course of the holidays. And when I'm talking about the holidays, I'm talking about uh, from the 1st of November through the uh, 1st of January. That span of time um, is what I'm talking about and referring to as the holidays. So everybody grieves differently. Um, and I think many factors go into um, how one handles the grief and loss process. Uh, it has to do a lot with how do you cope with life stresses uh, in general. Um, if, if you know you experience a stress or um, a certain frustration or whatever and, and you're not able to cope with it very well, chances are you're not going to be able to cope with, uh, with grief and loss very well either. Some people uh, start to feel better after the loss within weeks. Uh, sometimes months, and sometimes it, quite frankly, it takes um, it takes a little longer uh, to get past that that loss, whatever that whatever that loss was. So for for others, you know, uh, you know, some weeks, some months. For others, it's it's perhaps years. Um, and, and every time that that the holiday season rolls around, you know, our hearts get a little heavier and a little heavier and a little heavier. Even as the years go by, it, it, it might it might ease a little bit, but that doesn't mean it goes completely away. And I don't think it ever goes completely, completely away. Now, let me talk about some myths and some facts that are out there uh, regarding um, regarding grief. Uh, here's here's one myth. Uh, one myth is that the pain the pain will go away faster if you ignore it. The pain of loss and the pain of grief will go away faster if you just simply ignore it. Well, the, that, that's a myth. The fact is that, that, you know, the more you try to stomp it down, the more you try to uh, pretend like it's not there, uh, the more it just keeps resurfacing. Um, and so I tell people, you know, as I, as I help them through the grieving process, no matter what, what the, the loss is, that you will either grieve now or you will grieve later. And if you grieve later, it's gonna hit you like a brick wall. 
And so it's a myth to say that the pain will go away faster if you just simply ignore it. Myth number two is um, it's important to be strong in the face of loss. Um, we, we, you know, it's, it's important to be stoic, um, to, to not cry, to not show any emotion. Uh, some people refer to this as the, the, uh, the, the Jackie Kennedy syndrome. That, that if you remember that, you know, and, and during this time of year, you know, there's always these documentaries about the Kennedy assassination and the focus on Jackie. And she was, she was stoic. She, um, you know, she, she came across that way that, that she was, had, had her presence around her. Well, feeling sad or feeling lonely, feeling uh, are, are normal, normal reactions to loss. And, and the more you try to be strong, well, I've got to be strong for my kids. No, you don't. No, you don't. Now, I'm not saying that you should just simply cave in. I'm not saying that at all. But th don't be the opposite of that, which is th this very stoic. Um, this, you know, nothing, nothing's affecting me. I, I'm just, no. Um, you know, grieving is a family kind of thing. And when a family member is lost to death, it involves the whole family. And so you don't have to be strong for everyone else. That, that's simply a myth. Uh, another myth, myth number three, is uh, if you don't cry, it means you're not sorry for the loss. Really? Oh, my goodness. Again, let me go back to something I said at, at the very beginning. People experience grief in different ways. Um, and, and Grief is as different for individuals as there are individuals. Now, there is no right or wrong way. Grieving is a normal response to sadness, but, but it's not the only way. Um, some respond quite honestly, and, and I'm sure you've seen this as well. And, and you know, whenever you go to the funeral home, and <clears throat> and you, you know, there's a visitation, and then after the funeral, when you're eating, there's there's laughter, there's remembering the person as they live, not as they die. Um, and so it doesn't mean that that if you don't cry, that that you know you're you're not sorry about the loss. How that, that's just. That, that's just crazy to think that. Um, just because I don't cry, just because I don't grieve in the way you grieve, doesn't mean that I'm not grieving, um, grieving the loss. And then myth number four that I want to talk about is uh, grief should last about a year. Now they're used to that used to be a very prevalent thought and a very prevalent concept. But what we're finding more and more and more as 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 research has been done in a way that people. Uh, grieve and, and the length of time, that, that's simply not true. Uh, people, uh, again, just like there's no right or wrong way to, to grieve, there is no right or wrong time frame. Some, some get the past the grieving process uh, in a matter of weeks or months. Others, it takes longer to get past that. And so, uh, you know, we as, as friends of those uh, or other family members, of those who've experienced the, the loss and, and the grief, you know, should not pressure them. Okay, you know, you, you've been doing this for six months, you know, suck it up, get over it, uh, move on with life. You know, okay, we might see that, but see, I don't experience grief the way you experience grief. And so, you know, not only then if, if we're doing that, if we're saying, okay, uh, look, look, it's, it's been eight months and you, you need to get past this. So not only are we being insensitive to the way that person is grieving, but we're also um, you know, kind of shoving shame at them. You ought to be ashamed of the way that you're acting. You ought to be ashamed of the way that, that you're, you're portraying yourself. You, you, you need to be well beyond this. And what we're really saying is that I wish you would be over it so that I wouldn't have to experience it with you. Now that's what we're really saying, is that I'm uncomfortable in the presence of your grief uh, and your sadness, and you're crying. I'm uncomfortable with that, and so I wish you'd get over it so we could get on with the happier times. Um, nothing could be more insensitive than that. So uh, it's not. It, it's a myth that grief should last about a year. Um, for some people, it's a shorter amount of time, and that's okay. For others, it takes a little longer, and that should be okay as well. Now, um, there's been a lot of a lot of stu studies done on, on the different stages that people go through uh, when they're grieving. And again, what I'm getting ready to list for you is heightened now <clears throat> during the course of the holidays from November 1st to January 1st in that time frame. 
Uh, Elizabeth Kubler-Ross uh, came up with five stages of grief that, that, that is, is universally uh, accepted. And I want to click, quickly go down um, the, these, uh, these stages. Now, let me say at the outset before I really start listing them <clears throat> that um, it's not like, okay, I go through stage one, and then I go through stage two, and then I go through stage three. What you might find is that you will os kind of oscillate back and forth um, until you come to the last stage that I'm going to talk about here. Um, so, so these aren't just kind of, well, <clears throat> I'm going to be in the stage of denial for three months and then anger for the next six months. No, uh, you, you kind of oscillate back and forth between these. The first stage is denial. Denial is when we get that phone call or <clears throat> we get that knock on the door and uh, you know someone has said there's been a serious accident, you need to come to the hospital, um, and that's all they tell you. And then you go to the hospital <clears throat> and you find out that that loved one um, has died in a, in a tragic accident. Or you get, you, know, you get called into the doctor's office, then they tell you, um, you, know, you have six months to live. Denial is, th th this can't be happening to me. There's no way that this can be happening to me. I, I, I just saw them yesterday. I just spoke to them earlier this morning. This can't be happening, okay? That's denial, and, and I really believe that that's a mechanism that God has given us in our brain to kind of help us for just a little bit to, to kind of shut down um, so that we can absorb um, the impact of that, that news um, and what's, what's getting ready to happen. So denial is stage one. Stage two is anger. Um, <clears throat> why is this happening to me and who's to blame? You know, if you would have done this, if you would have done that, if I would have done this, if I would have done that, the coulda, shoulda, woulda. Um, and I may be angry at the person who is deceased. I may be angry at the doctors. I may be, I may just be angry at the world because remember, the one who is experiencing the grief and loss, when that, when that death occurred, life stopped for them. The world stopped. Now, for you and me, the world went on, but for that person, the world, their world stopped. Oh my goodness. And so, you know, particularly during these holiday uh, weeks, um, you know, I can't, I can't go shopping for hearing that, that silly, that stupid um, uh, holiday music. And, and, and everybody's happy and everybody's uh, uh, having a good time. But for me, the world stopped. And so there's anger. The, the third stage is what we refer to uh, as bargaining. Bargaining is uh, make, this, make this not happen. Uh, and in return, I will, and you complete the sentence. Um, if, if you'll just keep them from, from dying, if you'll just, if you just, if, if some way this, this event would not happen, I promise God, I promise, I promise, I promise, I'll do this. We often hear it referred to as foxhole religion. God, if you just get me out of this situation, I'll do this. Bargaining. Uh, bargaining with the doctor, bargaining with this person, bargaining with that person. Uh, bargaining with God, please God, just just change this situation. The, the fourth one is where a lot of people are um, during this time of year, and that's depression. Uh, depression is I'm I'm too sad to do anything. Uh, I don't feel like putting up the Christmas tree. Uh, I don't feel like buy, buying presents. I don't feel like fixing dinner. I don't feel like going to any parties. Um, I just I just want to be by myself. Isolation. So they become isolative. Um, um, and this may turn into clinical depression. Um, the depression here that I'm talking about is anger. Remember I just talked about anger earlier? It's anger turned inward is what depression is. That's a non-clinical uh, definition of depression. Anger turned inward. And then the, the fourth, or the fifth one rather, the, the, the fifth um, stage is the sense of acceptance. Um, and acceptance just simply says, I'm at peace with what happened. I don't like that it happened. In fact, I hate that it happened. I, did, I didn't want to lose this, this loved one. I, I didn't want them to die. I didn't, I didn't want them to go away. I didn't want this to happen. But now I accept it. And now, now I need to go on and I need to live um, life to its, its fullest. Um, I had this person for this amount of time, 
<clears throat> and it was joyful, it was wonderful. Sometimes it was frustrating, but, but it was good. And now I don't have that anymore, and so I need to create for myself a, a, a new kind of life, a different kind of life. Um, that, that, that now that they are not here, I need to go on living. <clears throat> not as a memorial to them and not as a, a uh, you know, just, but in a way that honors them by living my life to the fullest, and that's what they would want us to do. So those are the five stages uh, of grief. The, the next thing I want to uh, tell you is <clears throat> that grief, uh, grief is kind of like a roller coaster. I, you know, I've had people come into my office and they say uh, during the grieving process, I feel like I'm going nuts. I feel like I'm going crazy. Well, yeah, you're not going crazy. That's just that's just that roller coaster effect of grief. Some days I'll be I'll be wonderful and happy and 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 living life, and then all of a sudden, boom, it, it hits me. It may be a song, um, it may be <clears throat> a favorite food, a favorite place that we ate. It, 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 you know, getting together with all the family and recognizing that at the head head of the table that that chair is empty, and that person won't be coming. Oh my goodness. And then it just, whoa. There, there's, there's an acronym that I want to give you. It's called TUG, T-U-G, TUG. It stands for Temporary Upsurge in Grief. Temporary Upsurge in Grief. Typically happens right around the holidays to about uh, three weeks, typically, three weeks after the holidays. And that's where the, the sense of loss and grief is heightened a little bit, and it tugs at our heart. We're, we're just a little bit more depressed than we would be normally. <clears throat> we're a little bit more isolative than we would be uh, normally. And so like a roller coaster has ups and downs and ups and downs and corkscrews and upside down and uh, sometimes backwards, uh, grief is kind of that way during, um, during the holiday. Even sometimes years after the loss. Um, it's that way. Re remember I said there, that there's no right way or wrong way to do grief. We just do it the way we do it. And so, um, but it kind of gets heightened, um, you know, during, during the holiday, for that span of time um, during the holiday, uh, holiday season. Now, I want to kind of, kind of here at the last, give you just a couple of tips on, on hand, how, how to handle uh, grief during the holidays. Um, Number one, it's important that you, you get support. Um, that is a key factor. Whether, whether it's friends, whether it's family, whether it's your church, um, whether it's a minister, whether you know, whoever it is, you need support. Don't go through this holiday season like this on your own. It, 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 it will tend to swallow you up. You can turn to friends um, and, and supportive friends who can be there and just kind of kind of bolster you up, not get down in in that grief mess with you, but can be there just kind of give you give you balance. Um, draw on your faith. Um, you know, nothing nothing stretches our faith uh, like loss and, and grief. Nothing stretches it like that any more than that. Um, and so rely on your faith. Um, there, there are favorite, uh, you know, Bible passages that you can go to, and, and that, that are of comfort and a, a strength and an encouragement to you. Um, and, and if you don't, if you don't know those, those, well, then then ask, um, ask someone. What are some Bible verses? Or you can get on online and, and just Google um, Bible verses for grief and loss. And it's, it's going to give you tons of Bible passages, both Old and, and New Testament. So draw on your, on your faith. Uh, sometimes you need to so join a support group, um, particularly during the holiday seasons. There, there are some uh, organizations that have grief support groups. Some, some uh, organizations have them throughout the year, but usually they're heightened here during the holiday season. And so join that, join that uh, grief support group. You need people to come alongside you and walk this way uh, with you. Um, you know, and, and maybe you need to, need to reach out and talk to a therapist. Uh, I'm gonna give you my contact information here late, uh, later. And I would be more than happy to sit down and talk with you 
about what you're experiencing, particularly here during the holidays. Because sometimes along with the, the, the heightened grief and loss experience, um, you know, we often feel uh, guilt because, you know, well, I should be, you know, it's been three years, it's been five years, it, it's been a year, I should be at this. Well, no, just be where you're at. Be where you're at. Um, and so maybe, maybe you're having a bigger struggle, and, and I get that. So reach out and contact a therapist or, or, or contact someone um, that, of a professional nature that, that can help uh, guide you through these difficult days during the holidays. And, and tip number two that I would give you is take good care of yourself. Now, I know, I know that sounds cliche, and I know, you know a lot of people say that, but we really do need to take care of ourselves. And the way that we need to take care of ourselves, I think, <clears throat> during the holidays and the grief process during the holidays is to face those feelings. Don't stuff the feelings down. That's the worst thing in the world that you can do. Because remember, I told you you're going to grieve now or you're going to grieve later. Either way, you're going to grieve. And if you grieve later, you keep stuffing it down, it's going to, it's going to compound itself. And it's going to be more and more difficult um, to really deal with. Um, look after your, your physical health as well. Um, grief takes a toll on us because either we're sleeping too much or we're not sleeping enough. Sleeping too much or not sleeping enough. And so take, uh, take care of your physical health. Maybe, maybe you need to go to a doctor um, and, and uh, your physician and, and just get a checkup and just let them know, hey, what's going on? You know, here, here's what's happening and, and, you know, I'm just having a hard time here and, and, you know, I'm feeling this and I'm feeling that. And, you know, let, let, let your physician um, help you through that. Uh, you, you need to combat stress and, and, and fatigue, uh, getting enough sleep, eating right, um, and, and maybe, you know, getting on that, that treadmill a little bit or getting outside, you know, before the snow really hits and, and, and walking a little bit or jogging, whatever that is, um, take care of your physical health. And, and next, I, I think <clears throat> it's important here, uh, and this may sound a little harsh, but don't let anyone tell you how to feel. And don't tell yourself how to feel either. Well, you, you, sh you should fe be feeling this way. See, I don't, I, I don't have any right to tell you how to feel. <laughs> you know, feelings are neither good nor bad. They're neither right or wrong. It's just that's the way you feel. And so acknowledge that. Don't let anyone tell you, well, you know what? It, it's been a year. It's been six months. It's been five years. And, and you shouldn't be feeling that any. Well, what? No, 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 no. Um, don't let people, other people tell you how you should feel in this grieving process, particularly, uh, particularly during the holidays. And then I think lastly, what I'd like to tell you here uh, concerning take care, taking care of yourself is to plan ahead for triggers. Plan ahead for triggers. Um, it could be uh, music, it could be, um, you know, setting, you know, uh, decorating the Christmas tree. Plan ahead for those triggers, um, particularly if it's around the anniversary um, of the loss of that loved one. Um, the, these, these, uh, reaching those milestones uh, can kind of reawaken those, those grief feelings. And so be prepared. Um, so that you're not overcome by that. Um, have a plan, you know, okay, when I start feeling this, I'm going to reach out and talk to and, and have their name, have them on speed dial, right? Have them, have, you know, and, and you're gonna be able to reach out, then you're gonna be able to talk to them and, and help, and they can help you kind of kind of walk through this. Uh, let me just kind of finish up here a little bit. Um, grief, I don't think there's any other word for it. Grief is just messy. It's just, it's just messy. Uh, it doesn't matter what time of year it is. Grief is messy. And it's messier during this holiday season. Uh, and I don't have to tell you, if you're going through this, I don't have to tell you. But, but no two people grieve alike. Uh, see, grief doesn't take a vacation during the holidays. I wish it would. <laughs> I really wish it would, but it doesn't. Um, it's right there, knocking on your door, wanting to come in, uh, and it's wanting to take up residence with you during the holiday. It doesn't take a vacation. Um, 
And I think, I think because of that, what you need to do is, as much as you can, avoid isolating yourself. Uh, force yourself to go to that uh, Christmas cantata. Uh, force yourself to go to church and celebrate Christmas. The, the, the God giving His Son. See, God giving His Son, uh, Emmanuel, God with us, that's all about hope. That's all about hope. Hope for a future. Hope for, for uh, the, the joys of life. Hope that, that God loves me and He gave His Son for me. And it's noticeable that that family member is not there. Um, the memories of them are there. Everyone sitting around that table has memories of that person that's not there. Um, yeah, this might be a, a, a financially difficult time for you. Okay, I, I get it. It is for a lot of people. But that should not keep you from experiencing the joy of what God has blessed you with. That's what Thanksgiving is all about. It's about thanking God for what, yeah, he's, he, it's, this has been a hard year and maybe you've lost your job or you've lost your health or you've lost you know, you know, your home or you've, you've, you've lost, 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 but yet here you are, you're still here. And, and even through all of that tragedy, God wants to bless you even more in spite of that. And, and, and uh, beyond that, take a moment, would you? Take a moment and just, with all the pain and the heartache of loss and grief, just thank God. Thank God for what He has given you. Thank God for what He is going to do, has done, is doing, and will do in your life. Would you do that? Just take a moment to do that. Um, maybe you can be the one in your family gathering to just have everybody stop, you know, before they start eating the turkey, just stop and maybe go around the table and just say some, just a little some, some sentence, one sentence about what you're thankful for. There, there's an old, old hymn that says something like this. Um, Count your many blessings, name them one by one, and it will surprise you what the Lord has done. Well, listen, I want to thank you for tuning in to this episode of Lifeline for Daily Living. And if, if something that I have said uh, regarding grief and loss has kind of raised some things for you, there's three ways now that you can connect with me. Uh, the first way is with my phone number, 573-732-4575. The second way is uh, with my uh, Hotmail account. You can email me. My, life, uh, my uh, Hotmail account is lifelineonline at hotmail.com. That's the address lifeline online at hotmail.com the third way you can connect with me is if you're watching this via uh, facebook you can uh, private message me and if you'll give me your contact information i guarantee you i will respond to you whether it's in written word or give you a phone call whatever we need to do i want to connect with you and i'll see you next week right here on lifeline for daily living